Hey Oddings, it's your Ate Sapphire. Before we get into today's episode, I wanted to tell you about one of our sponsors who, without them, the show would not be possible. Did you know that fashion is the second most polluting industry in the world? That's pretty scary, right? That's actually one of the many reasons I love to shop secondhand, and my favorite place to do so is on ThreadUp. ThreadUp is the largest online consignment and thrift store. The website is super easy to navigate. You can filter the items by size, style, silhouette. I have a lot of weddings to attend this year and it was so easy to find amazing dresses at such great prices. I got this Aiden Maddox dress that was originally $395 for only $50. And I can't even tell that these dresses are used. And that's because everything on ThreadUp is hand inspected and triple checked for quality. They add over 50,000 new items every single day. So you are guaranteed to find something you'll love. Get an extra 30% off your first order when you go to threadup.com SS or click the link in the description below. And now back to the show. Hey, I'm Sapphire. Wanna hear something scary? She is not what she seems. This story comes from the creepypasta subreddit written by username Cupid's Fate. If you haven't seen the Something Scary episode about the elevator game, I highly recommend watching it first. About a year ago, me and my family took a vacation to America. We stayed in this fancy upscale hotel. We checked in and got our key to our room on the fifth floor. Every night, I'd go down to the lobby after dinner and read a book or watch a movie with my headphones and have little chats with the receptionist, Tom. One night, I was in the lobby reading and my mom texted me asking when I was going to come back up to the room. I looked at the time and quickly realized it was already 11 p.m. So I went back to my room and stayed up for a bit. After half an hour or so, I realized that I'd left my purse in the lobby. My dad and I kept trying to call Tom at reception via our hotel phone to see if he'd seen it or if it was still there. No answer. After about 10 minutes of trying, I finally decided to head back down. As I got into the elevator, I saw this shy looking girl my age, like 16 years old. She was wearing a really cute sweater with a triangle design on it. I love your outfit, I said. No reply. My name's Marissa, what's yours? She just ignored me and hit the button for the first floor. I thought maybe I somehow offended her or shit, it hit me. She might have been deaf or mute or had special needs. Then the elevator proceeded to go up to the 10th floor. That's odd, I said. I looked over at the girl, now looking down at the floor of the lift, quite nervously. I quickly apologized for whatever I'd done. Maybe I was offending her by repeatedly speaking to her, I don't know. But when I'm uncomfortable, I get kinda chatty. We arrived on the 10th floor. As the doors opened, the dark, empty hallway stared back at us. I assumed that she would hit the first floor button again, but she didn't. So I leaned over and pressed it myself. Just as I did that, she was stepping forward. She ran into my arm for a moment and stepped back. After I pulled my arm away, she stepped out of the elevator and into the hallway. Confused, I called out to her. Where are you going? I thought you were going to the first floor. As soon as I said that, she bolted. I shrugged it off and hit the lobby button. I got to reception and asked Tom if he'd seen my purse. Luckily he had, and he handed it over to me. You could have just called. I would have been happy to send someone up to bring it to you, Tom said. I actually did try calling from my room about half an hour ago, I explained, but I couldn't get through. I figured the line was busy or something. Mm, no, my line was definitely open. I'll have to look into that, Tom said. Before I turned around to head back to the elevator, I asked Tom if there were any deaf or special needs guests at the hotel. I told him about the girl in the elevator and how I might have scared or offended her. He told me he wasn't sure, and even if he did know, it wasn't information he should be sharing. I understood and headed to my room. The next day, me and my family were going out for the day for some tourist activities. I waved at Tom as we passed reception and then he waved for me to come over. That girl you mentioned last night, what did she look like? He asked. She was like 16 probably. She was wearing this really cute sweater with triangles. Tom looked incredibly worried. She never returned to her room last night 
Her parents called this morning looking for her. My heart sank. That poor girl. She was seen pressing random buttons in the elevator on the CCTV, Tom continued. That sounded familiar to me. I remembered seeing a video like that back in 2013, I think. Tom showed me the security footage and sure enough, there she was, looking nervous, pressing random buttons, then me entering on the fifth floor, then her leaving on the 10th. That night, I Googled the elevator game and I skimmed the rules. When you reach the fifth floor, a young woman may enter the elevator. Do not look at her. Do not speak to her. She is not what she seems. So that's why she was ignoring me. I was part of the game, her game. But I wasn't a monster, I was just a person, right? Am I not what I seem? Am I dangerous? It's been almost a year since that day and she still hasn't been found. They say if you play the elevator game successfully, you can travel to an alternate dimension on the 10th floor. But if you don't follow the rules exactly, you might get stuck there forever. And every now and then I wonder if my being there interfered with her ritual somehow. I wonder if I'm the reason she's stuck. If you haven't already, I highly recommend watching the Elevator Game episode of Something Scary. Thank you to all of our patrons, especially Marissa, who had a character named after them in today's episode. If you'd like to join our VIP program, visit patreon.com snarled. If you're like me and think buying bras is a nightmare, then let me tell you about Third Love. Third Love is an inclusive bra company. With 78 bra sizes, including their signature half cup sizes, it's one of the largest ranges in the industry. So no matter what size you are, Third Love has a bra made just for you. And with their online Fit Finder quiz, you can find your bra from the comfort of your home. So when I took the quiz, I answered questions about my breast shape and size and problems that I've had with most bras. After the quiz, I was recommended the classic contour or plunge bra because it has memory foam inserts to even out my asymmetrical boobs. And I was not disappointed. Not only did it fit me, but the band is soft and stretchy, the straps don't slip, and there's no itchy tag. Third Love is so confident that you'll love your new bra that they give you 60 days to wear it and wash it. And if you still don't love it, you can return or exchange it for free. It's that easy. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now, they're offering Something Scary listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash SS. Want more Something Scary? You can hear more stories over on the Something Scary podcast, available for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. The links are in the description below. If you'd like to submit a story, send me an email at somethingscary at snarled.com. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. And if you dare, follow me on social media. Until next time, sweet dreams.